Hey friends, Diane Adkins here. Wanted to give you a little tip on left hand technique and that has to do with the rules of fingering. There are two rules of fingering you should keep in mind and do unit practice to make sure that you are playing with good left hand technique. The first rule is set fingers down independently and I'm sure all of you already do that probably. So, for example, setting fingers independently would be if you were playing third finger you would set third finger down on the string by itself. Now some beginner students and young students are taught to set fingers sort of all three at once and that's okay if you're just getting started to you know set one two three for example in the twinkles but then eventually you want to get that three to be independent so set fingers down independently is the first rule the next rule is leave them down as long as possible and that's really important so uh, there are three reasons why you shouldn't lift fingers up ne unnecessarily and I'm going to give you those reasons and then uh, demonstrate why they're um, important the first reason is that uh, you don't want to have extra motions lifting fingers up. So for example, I was teaching early book one Suzuki today, and I was teaching um, the song Go Tell Aunt Rhody. And right there is an example of where you can leave a finger down and not lift it up. In that little segment. I left the one down while I played the two. Now if I didn't leave that down, if I lifted it up, that would be one extra motion. While I played two, I had one extra motion to lift it up, and then right after two, I have to play it again. So I have to set it down. So there's two extra motions just for one note. So don't let yourself be doing Don't do it like that. Keep fingers down as long as possible. And then and for my student there was a little problem at the end. Lifting fingers up together like that. So, reason number 1, no extra motions. And if you are lifting your fingers up unnecessarily. You may have one or two extra motions for each fingering. Uh, reason number two is that leaving fingers down is important because you might play it again. And here's a perfect example. In Allegro, right there in that spot, if I hold one, it's ready already. I don't have to lift it up or set it down. It's there already and it is coming quickly after I first played it. So leave the finger down in that spot. Reason number two, because you need to play it again maybe, so leave it down as long as possible. And then reason number three is that if you leave fingers down as long as possible, they can help other fingers that need to find their way. And a really good example that we dealt with today was in Long Long Ago. For example, in the middle section of Long Long Ago where you, where you have to play the D1, right there it is, and then I have to play 3. And the student was lifting it off first and then from midair trying to find third finger. And there was a little hesitation in there too for her to find that. So if I held the 1 and then set the 3 and lift the 1 after, it's a better way of playing it. Hop over, set three, now you can release one. Alright, so leave fingers down as long as possible and set them down independently, lift them up together. The reasons are, they help the other fingers find their way, you avoid having extra motions in the fingerings, and the fingers are ready to play the note again if you leave it there. Good job, guys. Talk soon.